Hello and welcome to our New Player Hero Guide series, where we look at each individual hero in the game of flesh and blood that is legal in the main formats of Classic Constructed and Blitz as well. There are lots of heroes that don't get onto this list, uh, but in my view these are the heroes that most players should look to pick up, as they are legal across multiple formats and therefore provide the most level of accessibility for the money that you spend on them. This list does cover every hero in the game, though some of them may not yet have been uploaded or may not have been updated in a while, but do look through the playlist attached for more ideas and new content for new players in Flesh and Blood. Victor Goldmain, introduced in Heavy Hitters, the set that came out in January 2024, is a guardian hero whose focus is on gold and fighting in the arena and earning as much money as possible. Coming from Northern Solana, his family is quite wealthy and he has used that wealth to gain every advantage possible in life. He is the spitting image of a gold-plated knight, as you can see here. What does he say about himself? Bow before my unmatched prowess, for your futile struggles in the arena are nothing more than the feeble floundering of an insect in the face of my brilliance. So straight away you can get an idea of the sort of character that Victor Goldmain represents. He is arrogant, he is loaded, and he is here to fight and win. But let's dive into some of his key cards. So Victor Goldmain himself, he is a guardian hero for Intellect 40 Life. Pretty standard numbers in Flesh and Blood at this point. The first time each turn you create a gold token for an effect you control, draw a card. The first time each turn you would fail to win a clash, we'll get back to that clash in a second, instead you may destroy a gold you control, if you do put one of the revealed cards on the bottom of its owner's deck and then clash again. So the first time you create a gold token, a gold token is a token that stays on the board and you may spend two resources to draw a card as an action with go again during your turn. The first time Victor creates those from any effect he controls, and you'll see a few of them in a second, he will in fact draw a card. As most cards that create gold will be a card themselves that you are playing, you can see how this is very resource efficient, giving you cards drawn to replace the card that you have just played, and kind of keeping your hand full is a very powerful effect. Clash is a new effect in Heavy Hitters, to do a clash, when a clash is triggered, you and your opponent both reveal the top card of your deck. The person whose card has the highest attack value, and of course an attack value, um, if there isn't one present on the card, counts as less than zero, wins the clash. If you would lose a clash with Victor, you can destroy one of the gold tokens you've generated to choose one of the revealed cards, put it on the bottom of the deck, and then try again. So you reveal a card that's weaker than your opponent, you might want to get rid of your card so you have a chance to get something higher. Your opponent reveals the most powerful card in their deck, they might want to get rid of, you might want to get rid of that card, and then you know still try and win with the card you revealed. His specialization card, the Golden Sun, kind of emphasizes everything that he's trying to do. So it's a yellow, pitches for two resources, four cost, seven power, and three block attack action. As an additional cost to play this, you may discard a gold token you control. You can see he's already made gold tokens. If you do, this gets plus three in overpower. As a reminder, overpower says can only be blocked by one, one action card. So that includes equipment that is actions, like the Evos we saw in Evo in um, Bright Lights. And it also includes attacks, actions from hand. It does not include defense reactions or block cards, which have now become a bit more prevalent in the game. When you win a clash revealing this, you will create a gold token. So if you trigger a clash and this is on the top of your deck and you win, you'll create a gold token which will then trigger you to draw a card. Here's an example of a clash card for you. When this defends, so it's a block card, so you'll block with your hand with it for four block. When this defends, you will clash with the attacking hero. The winner creates a gold token. So, for example, if you clash with Test of Strength and you reveal a powerful card and you win the clash, you will create a gold token and then draw a card. If you clash with Test of Strength and reveal Golden Sun, you will create two gold tokens if you win, but you will only draw one card as it will be the first time each turn. However, Test of Strength is a staple of the deck as it lets you generate gold consistently and is also a free block because, of course, if you reveal a gold token, um, if you win the clash, you then create a gold token which replaces Test of Strength and either allows you to block more that turn or go more aggressive. 
Victor's primary weapon, though there are a few being debated and it does change through different decks, is Miller's Grindstone. Um, this gives him the option to cl clash. Um, so you can see here, three attack. When this hits a hero, you clash with them. If you win, you destroy the top card of your deck, which kind of gives you an idea that Victor is a bit of a slower hero sometimes. He does have the capability to play a bit of a long game where he's destroying the top card of his opponent's deck and giving himself some options. If they win, so if you lose, you put a minus one counter on this. So if you lose four times, this doesn't attack for zero. It is still quite a powerful weapon to attack with, even if it's attacking for three, two, or one. It still takes a card out of their hand if they don't want to risk key cards from their deck being milled. Moving on then, so mechanics. How do we rate Victor from mechanics score? You'll see I've given him five stars. Why is this? Firstly, he has a heavy focus on blocking, which is quite forgiving in the game of Flesh and Blood because it keeps your life total very high. So for new players, that will give you the opportunity to keep your life total very high and give you more opportunities to make decisions. He has very strong resource efficiency. One of the other tokens he makes, aside from gold, is uh, Vigor, which generates one resource for you at the start of your turn. This, combined with the card draw from gold, means that you're often going to have a lot of resources with which to cast your Guardian attacks, and your Guardian attacks will often cost a lot of resources to sort of counter that, but usually there's quite a lot of wiggle room to use Victor and generate a lot of resources and feel like you have a lot of resources to pay for your effects. He has very good block values. The majority of the cards in his deck will block for three. Again, this creates a lot of breathing room for new players who want who can block a lot and then set up good turns that feel right to them rather than being pressured by constantly having to be on the attack. He has, however, as well, a lot of powerful attacks. So when the, on those turns where you do decide that you can attack and you do have a window to attack, you will feel quite powerful and quite strong, which means you kind of have a unison of both heavy blocking combined with the ability to do very powerful attacks, both of which feel very, very good from a mechanical perspective for a new player in Flesh and Blood. He also has inherited a lot of defense reactions from an existing Guardian suite, um, you know, things like Staunch Response, you can look that up, is a 2 for 7 in the red defense reaction. Um, you know, he has access to these great Guardian defense reactions that kind of give him the reach to be even more defensive if he needs to be, as well as combined with resource efficiency and heavy blocking. And the only other thing to mention, of course, because mechanically he really does touch on everything from block to defense reactions to items in the gold tokens to token play and blocking and things like that. He also has desirable attack reactions in the form of pummel, which let him basically threaten more damage into certain matchups where he needs more disruption. So all of these things in the toolkit means that mechanically he touches every part of the game of flesh and blood, but he does it in a way that new players should find quite accessible and very friendly. Moving on then to accessibility, of course, block cards are very interesting in the game of Flesh and Blood because they actually make defending choices more obvious. So when you've got a handful of block cards and attack cards, obviously it feels very easy to give the block cards to your opponent and then use the attack cards to counter attack. Now there is a level of depth there where you can pitch the block cards for later on so that they're cycling so that you can use them later on but it's also not a bad idea to just use some of victor's block cards to block and then use your attack cards to attack which can be very very easy for new players to grasp the high resource costs as well also make for tall turns with only one to two real decision points. One of the things a lot of people like about Guardian is that you can easily see from your hand, am I going to use my weapon for three, in which case I just need to keep one blue and I can block with three cards, or am I going to use this bigger attack which costs maybe four or five or six, which means I need to keep two blues and that card. And that means that really you're making one or two small decision points that will set up your turn and also deal with your opponent's blocking turn, both of which making it quite accessible. He also has an efficient use of the weapon. Your guardians love to use the weapon. It's always you know, going to be good on rate if it attacks for four. Um, that's above rate. If it attacks for three, it's still getting a card out of your opponent's hand. And you can block very, very well and use your weapon, which is very efficient, and it kind of simplifies his overall strategy. You don't mind if you block with three cards and then attack with your weapon. That's a very good guardian cycle. However, I will say that ratios and powers to clash successfully can be quite obtuse. 
um the theory that people are floating around with at the moment in victor though when i'm doing this the set has just come out is that 12 is probably the right number of cards that don't clash and also you want to be wary of how many misses you have within the rest of the cards um so you might have 12 non-attack actions or maybe six non-attack actions and six cards that have say four or power and the rest of your cards will be five or six or seven but there is a ratio there that new players might find a bit difficult just to make sure that their clashes are succeeding however i will say the feedback to that ratio being done incorrectly is you losing clashes too often so if you are building a victor deck and you find yourself losing clashes too often you need to revisit that ratio of how many high power cards you've got and how diluted your attack and high power pool is and that will see you through that so for that he loses one star but otherwise he's still a very accessible hero for depth again another four stars so this hero is doing very very well at our new player rating um the first thing to say is that he has this huge inherited pool so inherently he has a lot of depth because guardian has been a class around since wtr and has gotten cards from i think about five or six sets at this point which means guardian has a lot of tools to deal with a lot of different situations that means there's lots of deck choices there's lots of sideboard options so once you go down this rabbit hole of playing victor you might grab the first um you know deck you see online and build that and play with it for a bit but when you get deep into it and you have a full guardian stable of equip of equipment and cards you will be able to customize your deck in lots of different ways and there are also lots of historical dark guardian decks that did things very successfully that you can look at and take ideas and inspiration from he also has very flexible design because of that because of all the options he can pivot and adjust to many matchups cyborg guides for this hero will be interesting there will be variety to it you can also build your deck in different ways to deal with different metas so the depth here is you can learn how to adapt your deck as well as adapt your playstyle to a certain extent to counteract the different metas that are going on that flexible design means that depth wise there is a lot to learn However, I will say that his core loop is quite simple. So while he's getting four stars here, he does lose some because ultimately the block for six, swing an attack, block for nine, swing a weapon. You know, that core loop of Guardian is quite simple. However, I will say that beyond that core loop does lie a lot of depth. So don't let that heart, that that statement that his core loop is quite simple make you think there isn't a lot of depth in Guardians like Victor. So there is depth. There is complexity, but also I would say there is a lot of accessibility, which means it's very easy to award Victor a five star. So, you know, he plays every aspect of the game. He does every aspect of the game somewhat well, though he doesn't necessarily specialize in any of them, maybe blocking. His block cards and things like that, as well as his abundance of resources, mean there are a lot of choices, but sometimes those choices are more obvious. And of course, he has this huge inherited guardian pool of cards, which means not only are your cards playable in multiple other heroes like Bravo and Betsy and things like that, but also it means you have tons of choices to refine, learn more, and properly deep dive into this hero. So that's our rating for Victor Goldman. Five stars, four new players. Let me know if you agree with this in the comments below. Let me know if you have any questions this video did not answer. As I said sort of before at the start, we're not going into decks for Victor. There are other videos on my channel and other channels that do that because decks are the things that are most susceptible to change. Whereas I want this to be a resource for new players who are coming in to say, what hero should I play? Now, obviously, you're going to go and you're going to play the decks so of the heroes that catch your attention. But for the start, firstly, I just want to give you an idea of what heroes are good for new players and what heroes I would say are bad for new players. And, you know, not every new player is built the same. This may not apply for you, but I think from a generic standpoint, objective standpoint, Victor Goldman is a great place to start with. Thank you very much. And as always, there are more videos like this in the channel with more different heroes. So zoom in and have a look at those. Are there any other heroes that look out? They are sorted in a rough chronological order from newest hero to oldest hero. Um, and there are still some heroes in there that are not legal in the game. So if you hear me say the words living legend at the start of any hero segment, that implies that the hero is not legal in some formats of the game. And therefore you should consider uh, and do more research as to whether or not you want to play that hero. With that all being said, if you like this video, please do like and subscribe. I am a content creator. I am driven by the fuel of people's admiration. And thank you all, and I'll see you all soon.